Hey there, it's Larry again. Uh, trying another video this time, only not using my previous camera. And maybe I'll be able to control the noise a little bit better. Sorry about the last one with uh, all that bubbling noise, but as you can see, it was my aerator in my fish tank. That's what was causing all the racket. And yes, I've switched from uh, goldfish to trout, but as you can still see, I managed to keep my monster goldfish. I just put them in my sump this time. I got a different sump than what I had in the previous video. Oh, hey, that was nice and washed out, wasn't it? At any rate, I was uh, just going to post a quick video here showing the changes that I've made to uh, my stove since the last video. Um, as you can see on the chimney, I put little radiators on there to help get more heat into the room and these things are worth every penny that you pay for them now granted they're only 36 bucks but they're certainly worth it uh, I get a lot more heat into the room with these than what I did before which is the bare chimney uh, on my electronics up here not a whole lot has changed um, previously this switch right here was my fuel switch my blower that one is still my blower but now my fuel switch is a dial timer. It's able to be set up to 12 hours. And the switch up there simply replaces that little jumper wire that I had to use previously to uh, start the stove. Um, what else have I changed here? Oh yes, I have gotten rid of the computer fans and I have replaced the fans with a, it's called a bilge blower motor. Uh, there's a lot more static pressure to this. A lot more CFMs. And when I did that, I also had to add a uh, speed controller. A little basic pulse width modulator. They sold both of them on eBay. I think I got both of these for geez, under $40. Pretty sure that's what it was. Um, I've also changed my oil feed just a little bit. Uh, my oil line still comes in here, but now it's connected you know, to a little vinyl elbow and it goes into a copper line. And it comes over here and it drops down on top of the pellets. And the reason I did this is because I needed to, well, not only cure the problem that I had with the previous quarter inch copper line plugging up from too much heat baking the oil in there, but I needed more air into the, the burn pot. So not only do I have the air coming in on this one down here, I also have air coming in here as the oil drips in. Uh, the beauty of this is after changing this around, because as you remember from the previous video, the original air pipe had an elbow on it and it blew it straight down. Right now that pipe is actually causing the air to blow in a circle, create a vortex, and the one here, yeah right there, uh, that air bo blows straight down on the fire. And it's amazing the difference that it creates, uh, burn quality there's no smoke and I can't believe how much more heat I get um, with the thermostat turning the fuel on and off this little cup of pellets right here that is actually three hours of fuel and for that cup of pellets that's about the same amount of oil that this thing burns at the same time so what is that 16 ounces I'm thinking yeah 16 ounces of oil 16 ounces of pellets and I can heat this area out here for three hours and it works amazing. There isn't a single thing that I would change at this point. Um, <laughs> other than the fact that maybe possibly find a, a pellet stove manufacturer that might be interested in implementing this. Not that I'm out for any money or anything. I'd just like to see them make their pellet stoves do a little bit more and you know uh, become more efficient I don't I'm not a scientist so I can't tell you what the efficiency rating is on this all I know is that it's outrageous um, I'm gonna fire this up really quick and show you the 
little vortex of fire that comes out of that burn pot now and this will probably just blow your mind here but there we are back to our little cotton ball light that up drop it in there it goes and let's see if we can get showtime here I don't want to let that go too high but as you can see we got a vortex I'm going to turn that off I'm going to put the camera down real quick so it's going to go black and I'm going to put the burner inside the stove and lock it in one moment let's see And there she goes. Get that out of the way. So with this system here, it's a lot more efficient than what it was before, and I thought it was plenty efficient the last time around. Um, Got to go up here and turn my dial timer past two. That's about three. Get my hopper, drop my hopper in place, add the pellet, and that's all there is to it. Got a little bit of smoke coming out there now because I let the lighter fluid sit in the stove a little too long, or in the burn pot a little too long, so it's going to take a little while to calm down. But things that I've learned along the way since I started this, uh, these towers that I've made over here, the, you know, my version of the ZipGrow tower that pretty much works by accident. People can say there's a lot of science behind these, but there's a lot of science. And I don't know how I got so lucky since I'm not a scientist. Um, these things, although, you know, they're great for allowing you to grow your plants up the wall uh, in order to utilize the volume of your grow space rather than just your square foot area you know that's a great advantage however the big disadvantage to these is uh, if you're concerned about heat which i'm not since i have such an efficient heating system you're going to lose a lot of heat in the winter time and in the summertime you're going to absorb all the heat in the air so you're not going to have very stable temperatures. In my case, I'm going to have to put uh, some kind of a geothermal uh, cooling coil in the ground to pump my fish tank water through to cool it off because, you know, I'm using trout now and if the water temperature gets up to about 77 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark, they're going to stop eating and you know, I'm not going to have a very productive system. Uh, in the winter time, you know, it's kind of funny if there's a 20 degree difference, you know, just as a figure, um, between the air temperature and the water temperature, I can measure the temperature at the top of these towers and at the bottom, and they're just traveling 42 inches, a little bit of water traveling 42 inches, it will lose pretty close to, you know, one degree of temperature. However, in my little tube that's on the bottom there that I grow herbs and stuff in a cup in, I can measure the temperature from one end of that tube to the other, and it's constant. It does not lose temperature. However, the towers, they do lose temperature. In the summertime, it's really not as noticeable with an electronic thermometer. You might see a tenth of a degree difference between the top and bottom. But over the course of a day, um, you'll be able to see your temperature in your water tank, your fish tanks, go up. <laughs> so that's what I mean, you know, there, for all the science that's put into the ZipGrow towers, and I have a friend 60 miles away who has actual ZipGrow towers, he has the same problem. So it's not just my design, it's the design of the tower, and I think it's the design of all vertical grow systems. As your water travels through the air from top to bottom, you're going to lose your heat, and in the summertime it's going to be the other way around. So I think that's about all I have. Um, 
few other things that I've noticed with this. Um, I'm still raising my temperature in my heat exchanger down here, which is fed from the copper coil that's wrapped around the barrel stove in there. Uh, I found that if I slow my water flow down so that uh, barrel gets to about 125 degrees. I was doing 140 before, but I found that it's really not necessary to get that hot. Get that up to about 125 degrees and the fish tank water that pumps through the coil on the top, you know, the stainless steel coil that's submerged in that water and antifreeze solution in the barrel. If you pump that water through there at a rate of about, you know, one gallon, uh, one gallon a minute, the heat that's in that barrel will slowly transfer into the fish tank and this thing will be able to retain its temperature. Oh, pretty close to maybe eight to ten hours somewhere in that neck of the woods. So it, I'm not drastically changing my water temperature. I might raise it two degrees over the course of ten hours and that's a really you know, over the top figure. But I'm telling you, it, it works. And even with the, you know, the fundamental design flaw of the vertical grow system, I can keep up with the temperatures and not, you know, freak out my fish. It'd be a real shame if I was growing tilapia because in the winter time there'd be no possible way that I could stabilize the water temperature enough. So that's, I guess it's a good thing I switched to trout. So I'm saying, I think that's about all I have to say here. Uh, I'm gonna post another video, hopefully tomorrow, because I had a bunch of people ask me about the maintenance of the fiber media in the towers that I created. Uh, that one might actually kind of crack you up. Please. There's not a whole lot to it. At any rate, I'm going to cut this video off here and uh, go have a beer. So that's about all. Take it easy. Talk to you later.